Today is the day. We are finally finishing the 100,000 ish dollar six editors, one CPU machine. It's been a freaking long time coming. Ugh, come on! So we won't make you guys wait. That's all looking peachy. Any longer. Now this should work and it should show up over here. Hey! To hear this word from our sponsor, Pebblehost. Are you in the market for a hosting provider? Try Pebblehost. They balance price and performance with VPS hosting starting at $275 a gig and game hosting at $1 a gig. Use code LTT at the link below to save 15%. At this point, those of you who have been keeping up with the $100,000 PC saga have probably seen this machine put together and then torn apart again four or five times. So it's safe to say that we've already dry fitted everything and we know it all pretty much works together. So just like the last video in this series, we've stuck with the God tier Tyan S7100 EX motherboard. Yes, it's a little ugly, because aesthetics and RGB aren't exactly top priorities for server manufacturers, yet, give it time. But it's got it where it counts because the thing just works. Speaking of working, the original CPUs that Intel supplied for this build are of course <clears throat> no longer working. Um, I dropped one of them and we weren't able to source a matching retail Xeon 8180 Platinum replacement without spending nearly 10,000 US dollars. Remember guys, you need to use two of the exact same model in most dual socket systems. So we turned to eBay and obtained a pair of QS or qualification sample 8180s for less than half of what we'd have spent for a single retail one. Now, QS chips aren't perfect, but unlike engineering samples, which may be less reliable or have significantly lower clock speeds, QS chips are the ones that are sent out to OEMs just before a particular model launches for their final validation and testing. What that means is that in many instances, they are practically speaking, or even literally, exactly the same as a retail chip, save for the labeling on the integrated heat spreader. So we are hoping that these should work perfectly for our little experiment, especially with an EK Annihilator CPU block keeping each one of them cool. Man, those are industrial looking. For our RAM, we stuck with the 384 gigs of ECC DDR4 memory running in a six channel configuration that our friends from Kingston sent over almost a year ago. So this is gonna give us about 60 gigs of memory for each of our six virtualized 8K video editing workstations with a little bit of leftover RAM for our hypervisor. Now, our GPUs are of course the same six NVIDIA Titan V 12 gig HBM2 cards that we've been working with since earlier in the project. Each one of our virtual editing stations is gonna get one of these fully dedicated to it. Now, because we're using GPU pass-through, as far as our editor is concerned, it's like that card is installed directly into their own computer. Now for this video, we've done something special with our cards. Each one of them was outfitted with one of these beautiful acetal slash nickel EK water blocks, and then mated to a custom six GPU terminal, which might give you guys some of those sweet nostalgia feels from all the way back in seven gamers, one CPU. Massive thanks to EK, by the way, for going out of their way to make this thing happen because dang, this looks awesome. Now, to dissipate the up to 2,000 watts of heat that our CPUs and GPUs will kick out under full load, and remember that's without overclocking, we settled on a full complement of EK Waterblocks' ultra-thick class radiators. We've got quad 140mm units for both the top and the bottom, as well as a triple fan model on the front. Now we did have a bit of trouble mounting our 140 millimeter Noctua fans, as the clearances are just slightly off with these radiators, but thanks to some space under the top panel, we made it work. Now, even with this configuration, we're not 100% sure that we've got enough cooling capacity. 
Problem is, we kind of had to roll with it since Case Labs, the company that makes this monster chassis, uh, excuse me, I misspoke. I should have said made this monster chassis because they went out of business while we were working on this project. So we really can't get any more parts for it. Not that I think there would have been anywhere to mount them because I think we've managed to build one of the few machines in existence that truly needs a case of this magnitude. To find out why, let's have a look at the crown jewel of our build, this PCI Express expansion daughter board, courtesy of One Stop Systems. So this bad boy, or girl, whatever it is, is gonna allow us to take the bottom PCIe 16X slot on our motherboard and then break it out into eight more slots for a total capacity of up to 14 expansion cards. Take that, Mac Pro. What this gives us is two individually hot pluggable USB ports for each of our editing machines and a Mellanox 100 gigabit ethernet card to pull all that juicy 8K footage off of our main editing server, which is also equipped with one of Mellanox's high-speed network cards. Now, we're only able to run our cards at 40 gigabit because we don't have a 100 gigabit network switch or enough PCI Express bandwidth anyway, but that should still be plenty for six 8K raw streams. So the thing is here that the daughter board wasn't necessary per se, it's just that without it, we would have had to use a bunch of USB hubs and assign each USB device individually to our editors, meaning that any changes would require reconfiguration in Unraid and a reboot of the virtual machine. So, yeah, it's mostly a creature comfort, but I think it's super cool because it means that for all intents and purposes, our editors might as well be sitting at a completely normal computer. Now mounting this thing was a bit hard to watch. Not because Jake doesn't know his way around a Dremel or anything, but it's more just that this is a 500 US dollar case, and more importantly, you straight up can't even buy them anymore. Thankfully, it turned out pretty dang clean. We actually ended up stealing the PCI Express slots from a Thermaltake Tower 900, and it worked perfectly for the eight cards that we needed to install. Then we mounted the daughter board with some upside down bolts, threaded through the bottom of the case, and it was off to the races. Now as for the rest of the trunk over here, we ended up going with dual EVGA 1600 watt T2 80 plus titanium power supplies with some sexy cable mod cables. Now, I'm one of the first people to point out that one power supply of this magnitude is totally unnecessary. But this is not exactly a normal computer. Remember guys, even just the GPUs in this system could be too much for a single power supply, 1600 watts or otherwise. So for us then, two of these bad boys fits the bill nicely and should even give us plenty of headroom for capacitor aging or even overclocking. Think of it kind of like being that guy at the car show with the nitrous bottle in their trunk, except the nitrous is a second power supply and rather than being outside, they're in their mom's basement. Speaking of horsepower adders, the eight 10 terabyte NAS drives that we have installed in the front of the case can be used to assign local bulk storage to our virtual machines, and we'll be using our dual Intel 905P series Optane SSDs as a write cache for our magnetic drives, as well as for raw high-speed storage for the Windows installs for each of our editor. Now, the reason we used Optane for this is that when you're hitting a drive with six users at a time, uh, booting up or launching programs, even a high-speed NVMe SSD can struggle. Well, Optane has much faster access times, so we're hoping that to our editors, this entire virtualization experience should be transparent. Although we haven't actually tested that yet. Now with the build mostly dry assembled at this point, we could finally get to running our tubes. Yes, we went with soft tubing. So no, it's not the sexiest machine in the world, but with a good chunk of EK Waterblocks nickel fittings and a little bit of creativity, we still think it looks pretty good. Not in a blinged out RGB gaming rig kind of way, but in more of like a, this thing does real work kind of way. 
And it has the added benefit of making it much easier to reconfigure the system if we ever decide to upgrade it in the future. So from there, just add water and a little bit of patience and wha-bam, finished system. Of course, we're not done yet though. I've been out of the office for a few days while Jake's been getting things together, so why don't we go check it out? All right, so for our first power on test, we're not trying to go full ham, virtual machines, everything. So we've actually unplugged our Optane drives and our hard drives and just threw a simple basic SATA SSD with a Windows install on it because we want to make sure it's all still working after the assembly ordeal. We have fan spin. Hey, do we have display on the other side? Nice. We want to find out if our cooling solution is actually adequate. Before we start though, let's do a good old fashioned Cinebench R15 run. Ready? There it is, boys. Oh my God. <laughs> and you're done, 7,000. So something that a lot of people don't know is that just because you have two CPU sockets doesn't mean that even a heavily multi-threaded application like Blender, you can see it's using the entire first CPU it doesn't necessarily mean that it can utilize the second CPU. It just doesn't quite work that way. All right, so here we are. Blender's running. Our GPUs are all sitting at 75, 80% utilization. Our CPU's at 92%. And all we can do is let it cook for a bit. Oh, wow. Like just this chassis being made out of aluminum just like feels like a bad idea. Like there's so much flex to it. If only it was like a cheese grater. <laughs> I don't think you could fit that many cores in a cheese grater. Ouch. Yeah, this is twice as many cores as a new Mac Pro. Just saying. The highest end Mac Pro. <laughs> yeah. That means each one of our editing stations effectively has an eight core CPU, 60 gigs of memory, a 100 gig Optane drive, and its own Titan V. And wow, they actually booted really fast in spite of you like <laughs> starting them rapid fire like that. That's flipping awesome. And we're good. You know what? No, for the purposes of today, we're just trying to find out if it can handle a full load yes. thermally and stability wise. So let's forget about Premiere. Let's just start loading up stress tests on these things. What stress test should we do? Well, let's throw like Ida, Ida and uh, Furmark. Boom, there. All right, so here comes our first set of stress tests. We're going stress FPU on Ida64 and GPU stress tests at 1600 by 1200. Yeah, that's better. If we don't leave a couple of CPU cores for Furmark to grab, then it throttles the GPU and we don't use up all the power. So time to do number four. I'm having fun. It's finally done. All right, I'm ready to go with stress test number four. Not bad. Is there a reason you didn't put fans in the bottom two here? Um, no. No, we oh. could. We should. Yeah. Because that would look more, you know, symmetrical. Ish. You gotta cool these Optane SSDs, yo. <laughs> Actually, it's not a terrible idea. The fan's still not on on the second power supply. Okay, so we've had the whole thing running for about five minutes now. Um, our block of GPU blocks is noticeably warm to the touch. Not hot, not uncomfortable, but it's warm. These fans that are blowing down, ha like it's kind of like having a space heater blowing at me from under the computer. Uh, same thing up here. And uh, we've actually got some temperature results as well. So it looks like our GPUs have settled in right around the 55 to 60 degree mark, depending on which ones we're looking at. And then Jake, you got CPU temps, right? 48, 49 across the board. Now we're not fully loading the CPU, but I mean, we're probably over 80%, right? You tell me. That looks not bad. <laughs> we're hitting it pretty hard. So that's it guys. At long last, it's finally working. Not only that, but our cooling solution is adequate. Good job, Jake. And the thing actually seems to be stable. So all that's left now then is to get a nice long 40 gigabit network cable, plug this thing into our switch and get six editors 
set up with full stations around it and to see if we actually can do it. Because this has all been theoretical up until now. Theoretically, if we have eight CPU cores and a Titan V and 60 gigs of RAM, it should be fine. But it's all theoretical up till now. Let's see if we can do it. Six times 8K editing workstations off of a single tower. I can't believe it's finally working. Speaking of work, I've got some work to do too, to tell you guys about our sponsor for today's video, Mastrop. The Mastrop HD6XX headphones is one of the most successful collaborations that Drop.com has ever done. They've sold over 70,000 units of these things, making them the all-time bestseller on Mastrop. And it's no wonder, they've got a balanced mid-range, natural sounding bass, they're open backed, they sound absolutely fantastic. They're actually very similar to my daily driver HD650s, and they've made a couple of tweaks based on community feedback. They've got a 1 8 inch plug for everyday use and a 1 quarter inch adapter for professional use and Sennheiser backs these headphones with their support. So check out the link below and get your HD6XX headphones today. So thanks for watching guys. If you disliked this video, hey, it's on now. <laughs> You can hit that button, but if you liked it, hit like, get subscribed, or maybe consider checking out where to buy the stuff we featured at the link in the video description. Also down there is our merch store, which has cool shirts like the one I'm wearing, and our community forum, which you should totally join. I'm a little bit concerned. One of our displays just went blank. Um, ah, hey, okay, the monitor just went to sleep. It's all good. Yeah, woo! <laughs> yeah, it's still working. <laughs> good. So, $100,000 computer was based on if we were gonna load it up completely with top-end Quadro cards, which didn't end up happening. So we took some artistic liberties with the naming of the computer. <laughs>